All right, guys, I figured I'd show you how I do spring load. Sophia's home, so she's doing the camera work. And uh, as you can see, I have this intake valve set up with the shims that I believe it's going to need and uh, a small lightweight spring to hold the keeper in. Make sure it's set. Measure it. You want to feel just the tiniest of drag on the calipers. And that way I have my height. Okay, we got about 1.71 installed height as of right now. According to the specs from Comp, these should have a load of about 121 pounds at 1.8. Camera over here. So, we've got my old Dake 40 to 1 press with a wrench because when I got it for free, it was completely broken and I've been using it with the uh, different wrenches to do everything I need to do for years. This is, oh God, I bought this over 30 years ago. It was not a super high dollar piece. I think it was $159 in the late 80s. And it's still quite accurate. In fact, it reads a little bit low because it's easy to test. And we compress, we compress our spring until we get, see if you can get, see this little edge right here? See if you can get the camera right there. We want to get it just even with that. Okay, which isn't the easiest thing to do because I'm pretty much blind. Okay, now make sure you get what the load says right here. What do we say? What do we show right there? 150? 160? 150. Oh, 150. 150, which is what I want these set for. Okay. That one's ready to go onto this one. Correct shims in it. It's lubricated. It's got its seal in place. We put our spring and retainer in place. In order to do this right, you need a real spring compressor, okay? This is a snap-on. I can't tell you how old it was. I'm sure I got it when I was in high school, okay? And this will do just about any valve springs you need to do. You gotta be slow. When you compress it, you can't twist this a whole lot because you could damage the uh, the stem of the valve. If you bend the stem of the valve just a touch, it's going to be uh, it's going to be bad. And you release it nice and slow. Okay, just one left. I've got the shims in place. I want to show you how I clean the guides. So to clean the guides. We use our a brush. I always give it a. So you clean the valve out with a, a lint-free paper towel, and what I like to do is I like to oil the guides and uh, let it go up and down quite a few times. You'll actually see, see that black coming up on the stem of the valve. That won't come up till maybe the third or fourth time, and you're going to keep doing that until she comes up clean. Yes, it makes a mess. You go through a lot of oil doing it this way. But think about it. These are gonna have Viton seals on them. They're not gonna get a huge amount of oiling to begin with. So we want it to start off with some nice clean oil. And you can also feel when you do it, you can feel when all the grit's gone. It'll be nice and smooth when she's, when she's clean. These Viton seals, are really nice, but they don't take a whole lot to install them. You can just push them on with your hand. And uh, that is all you guys need to know. The only thing, other thing I wanted to show you guys is take a look at how I clean these. Yeah, they got a touch of rust on them, but Terry Grover had a, a video not too long ago where he actually used some oven cleaner to degrease these. It worked great. FYI, I wish I had known about that 30 plus years ago because it really cleans them up nice. 
and it's uh, not a lot of work. Spray it, let it sit for about an hour, hose it off, air dry it, and this is about all the rust you'll get, is this light coating, which they're going to get a coating of WD-40 before they get bagged and shipped anyway. Okay, guys, so this is our installed height. Now, an easy way to check for coil bond, right? Just zero that, reduce it down to maximum amount of lift you expect to see it. This is going to have a 544 lift cam in it. And if he really wanted to be a wise guy, he could put 1.73 rocker arms on it. That would bring it up to a 588 lift. So 600 lift is well within our safety specs, right? Let's check for coil bind and load at whatever this distance is right now. So we're going to set my other set of calipers up for that. Okay, that's set. So we've got two calipers. Let's do, this is our last spring, so let's just check our load here. Which should be good. Okay. Take a look at the gauge. About the same as the last one. Now I gotta really lean on it and compress it. That is the most we can expect. That is actually when it comes to coil bond, which is about 600 lift with our original 1.71 installed height. Well over 350 over the nose, more than enough for our 6500 RPM. Max, which we know he'll be running uh, 7,000 plus at some point, right? Why is it important to make sure? I personally am going to tell him I, I would much rather have him run 1.6 rockers than 1.73s. 1.73s are a little bit too close to the limits with these springs. Plus, you have to realize these are already set up with a lot of load. And when you change the rocker ratio, you're increasing the loads on everything else in the system. Uh, the way this is set up, I'm going to tell him just run 1.6s. Of course, in the future, he can do whatever he wants. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out.